always falling back on people like Seth Rollins and Daniel Bryan. Do you believe that they're the only ones you're confident enough in to be your champion, to be your main man in WWE in the absence of all these wrestlers? I mean, they broke down eventually. That was expected. I mean, when you're overworking talents like Seth Rollins and Kane all the time, what do you expect? Do you think they're going to last forever, especially someone like Kane, who has been with professional wrestling for over 17 years? I mean, how long do you think someone like Kane is going to last? And Randy Orton, I mean, sure, Randy Orton looks like someone who's chiseled out of stone. He's one of the second or third generation uh, family members of the Ortons. But the thing is, even though Randy Orton surpassed the legacy of his father, Cowboy Bob Orton, I mean, he had to break down eventually, and he went down with a shoulder injury, which is unknown now he's going to be coming back from. He's sidelined for an indefinite period of time. Time. So the thing is now with all these wrestlers injured and wrestlers taking time off, I mean, where do you go from here? And who do you point the finger or blame at? Obviously, it's Triple H and Stephanie. And let me say this. Something has to be done about Triple H and Stephanie's sense of direction. They are not doing anything intelligent. It's far from intelligent what they're doing. It's making no sense to me whatsoever. Week in and week out, it seems like more pathetic things are happening on professional wrestling. The championships are all handed out wrong. The number one contenderships are handed out definitely wrong. When people who should be number one contenders are not number one contender, second and third to these number one contenders that WWE are trying to convince us actually deserve chances at the championships. The championships are handed out wrong and the number one contenderships are dealt out all wrong. So, I mean, we're all in a clusterfuck. We're caught up within a clusterfuck with professional wrestling and something really needs to be done. And I can't forget about how they traded Sting, resulting in Sting breaking his neck and it's unknown when Sting's going to be returning. He's also sidelined for an indefinite period of time. And I think that whenever, when, whatever they've done with Sting this year, however, they went about it. I think that's what really sickened me the most about Triple H and Stephanie. And that's when I said, you know, something had to be done about Triple H and Stephanie. And I said to myself, you know, they have no idea how to run uh, the WWE. When Sting went down, breaking his neck, of course, being curb stomped eventually after the doctor came out, stopped the match, checked on the condition of Sting. Sting wanted to be professional and go through with finishing the match. He was eventually curb stomped by Seth Rollins into the mat, ending the match the way they did, of course, because of the injury Sting sustained during the match. Seth Rollins retaining the title and then going on a few short months later to blow out his knee in a match they were actually on tour for overseas, touring Europe and the UK, and then Seth Rollins goes for this running power bomb, blows at his knee when he has the wrestler up on his shoulders. Uh, it was also to be expected that Seth Rollins would go down with major injury, because, I mean, how long can you overwork talents like Seth Rollins, Randy Orton, and Sting, expecting them to, you know, get years out of them, and eventually they break down? I mean, Sting is 58 years old, 59 years old. I mean, how many more years do you think Sting actually has left as a wrestler on the active roster? He doesn't have many. His years are numbered in professional wrestling, and the years of people like Randy Orton and Seth Rollins, unfortunately, could also be numbered with how much you've been overworking them over the last 13 years when you talk about someone like Randy Orton. And it all goes back to how Triple H and Stephanie love to play favorites with the same four or five wrestlers all the time. If it's not Seth Rollins, it's Kane. If it's not Kane, it's Sting. And I really hate how they're overworking talents who don't deserve to be overworked and need to have something more creatively done with their characters. I mean, someone like Sting deserved far better than what he got from Triple H and Vince McMahon. Now, I understand how Vince McMahon's had a grudge against WCW for years, and they weren't going to let WCW win at WrestleMania 31 earlier this year in that match with Triple H and Sting. There was no way that Vince McMahon or Triple H or John Laronitis even were going to allow WCW to win. The NWO winning over DX, Sting winning over Triple H. There was no way that was going to actually fall through in WWE. I believe that Triple H actually had a chance of winning that match. I just didn't want to believe that it was actually going to come into fruition. But I thought that by now Sting would have actually won his first WWE Championship as opposed to losing every major pay-per-view match that he's been in. I mean, he has yet to win a major pay-per-view match. He's lost at every major pay-per-view. He hasn't won a major one-on-one -on -one match in WWE. He's lost every single match he's been in. Only though it's been two times we've seen Sting in a match on a pay-per-view. He's 0 for 2 at pay-per-views and 1 for 1 for 0 in matches where he's actually wrestled on free teams. TV. It's not impressive. It doesn't impress me at all. And again, you know, you're going back to the authority and how they're running the WWE. I wish that Triple H was saying more intelligent things in terms of statements and making more intelligent decisions out of professional wrestling. But unfortunately, he's not. And we're all suffering because of this for, as wrestling fans. And I really feel for the wrestling fans out there who don't have time to review this business, who read these columns 
on the internet and don't review the business who wish they probably did have a sense of direction with WWE because you guys probably have a better sense of direction than what Triple H has or what Stephanie has as a principal owner, which leads me to believe that Vince McMahon is not as confident as what he seems to be, leaving control of WWE in the hands of people like Triple H and Stephanie. I mean, if you were Vince McMahon, would you feel as confident as what Vince McMahon is saying that he is, leaving control of a company that you put billions of dollars behind in the hands of someone like Triple H and Stephanie? I know if I were Vince McMahon, I sure as hell would feel very confident leaving control of WWE in either the hands of Triple H or Stephanie or both, because they don't seem to have a sense of direction. They don't say very intelligent things. They don't make very intelligent decisions. And I think it's time to really reevaluate WWE creative and who's really in charge and calling the shots in WWE. That's why I couldn't have been more proud reading a report that it's believed that Vince McMahon is still the one calling the shots backstage because at least Vince McMahon has a sense of direction. Although we're not seeing him on free TV or pay-per-views anymore, at least he's still calling the shots backstage and has a sense of direction. But I think the influence behind how the authority have changed the direction obviously has to do with Triple H and Stephanie because they've been really at the forefront of the authority ever since two. 2013 when they crowned Randy Orton the first ever WWE World Heavyweight Champion and of course formed the Alliance of the Authority. And I said this in a written column when I talked about the future of the Authority with WWE or the International Alliance which I've chosen to refer to them as. Uh, the thing is when they first brought the Authority into WWE and had Vince McMahon align himself with the Authority in the fallout of SummerSlam saying that McMahon family didn't care about what the fans wanted. If they would have kept Vince McMahon on free TV, the ratings probably would have been higher and this whole authority idea that they're shoving in our faces probably would have been far more effectively distributed than what it is being distributed on TV, but they took Vince McMahon out of it too quickly, and it was almost like Vince McMahon was just there to put things in motion for the authority to show up on WWE, and was just used as another excuse to keep him off TV while he still had creative control and maintained it backstage and made decisions off TV, and Triple H came out just in storyline purposes and just allowed that he ran things and was calling the shots as the CEO of the company, just as Stephanie did as the principal owner. Uh, but the thing is, I think what they should have done is they should have kept Vince McMahon on TV for far longer than what they did, and they shouldn't have had Vince McMahon come out at the end of 2014 and question the authority's sense of direction, saying that if they lose the Survivor Series, of course, uh, building up for the debut of Sting in WWE, they would no longer be the authority. It was an effective way of setting up for the uh, whole Survivor Series thing with Sting coming in, setting up for next year's WrestleMania in 2015 for WrestleMania 31 and Sting versus Triple H, very effectively put out there. Uh, but the way they went about it was just so stupid. Here's Vince McMahon, of course, approving of everything the authority was in 2013. And then 2014, he wasn't approving of everything the authority was. It was really ridiculous. Again, you know, going back to pointing the finger of blame at the authority. I mean, who do we really blame here? It's either the authority or TMZ for posting all these real-life things. They're posting about wrestlers on their website at TMZ.com. It's either pointing the finger of blame at the authority or TMZ.com or some other celebrity blogger website who loves to criticize professional wrestling and who can blame people for criticizing professional wrestling with everything going astray and going awry in professional wrestling. It's not the fault of the fan who's just watching the product who wishes they could do something about it because I know there's more than enough people out there who wishes they could do something about uh, the product of professional wrestling. God knows more than enough times I wished I could do something about the product of professional wrestling, but at the end of the day, really, what can I do about it? I only complain on my YouTube channel at Jonathan Clark 22 which I'm no stranger to having done because of Triple H and Stephanie being so unintelligent. And I mean, we've seen so many intelligent people in professional wrestling. If you're that uncertain of a direction, why not give uh, Paul Heyman creative control in WWE like he once had? Why not give Paul Heyman a significant amount of responsibility uh, with WWE? or bring back Eric Bischoff, somebody who actually has some bit of intelligence uh, when it comes to professional wrestling. The thing is, people have chosen to come down hard on Heyman for years, but the thing is about Paul Heyman, the way that I've always perceived Paul Heyman's reputation for being in professional wrestling, it's a creative genius. Even though they've called him a liar and a cheat and someone who doesn't have a sense of direction with professional wrestling, at least Paul Heyman has a creative direction, which if they went in, uh, with WWE, WWE would be in far better shape than what it is right now. And that's the unfortunate thing about how WWE are handling things. I mean, you have all these creative geniuses of minds 
uh, behind closed doors like Paul Hammond, but they're not in a position of authority like Triple H or Stephanie. And because of that, with all the creative direction being in the hands of Triple H and Stephanie, they're going nowhere, and they're just headed down a very uncertain path and in a very uncertain direction and trapping themselves in a proverbial corner and an impenetrable corner, which is really unfortunate. And that really, the only ones really who are suffering out of all this are not Triple H and Stephanie. As a matter of fact, the ones who are suffering are the everyday wrestling fans who wishes they could do something about uh, the product of professional wrestling, but they're not. I mean, we're in a position right now where they're trying to rekindle the old days of the authority and the remnants of the authority by convincing us that Seamus, Rusev, and King Barrett are the new authority, this international alliance. I really wish Paige also fit in that too, of course, where she's the number one contender to Charlotte's championship all the time, and I really wish that she fit into the international alliance in WWE because of just how popular of Diva she's always been and how she has this international feel coming forth for the uh, Divas Revolution. I think that would fit perfectly with the whole international alliance thing, but they've kept that out of the way, and they're just focusing on the idea of Seamus now being champion. As I said here earlier, you know, I buy into the whole idea of Seamus being champion. I think he's a far more effective champion than what Seth Rollins is right now, considering the number of wrestlers you have on the DL, but I don't buy into the whole idea of Rusev and King Barrett being involved in this whole idea of Seamus being champion, along with everything else that's happened in the wake of Survivor Series, and I doubt I will ever get into this whole idea of Seamus being champion. If Seamus was just champion on his own, and he's representing the whole idea of the Hawk on his own without Rusev and King Barrett, they wanted to push Rusev on his own away from Sheamus and King Barrett, I would understand it more, because I'm really proud of what they're doing with Rusev now, but I think to push Rusev, what you need to do is you need to get him away from Sheamus and King Barrett, because we've seen Sheamus and King Barrett teaming up in recent months, so it makes more sense just to have Sheamus and King Barrett align, rather than just having Rusev show up 